Hi, welcome back to my channel. I teach you up. In today's last minute cheat sheet series, let's go through Google Cloud Storage. As I promised in the Google Cloud Certifications Exam Preparation Q&A video, I will make a video to cover the Google Cloud Storage. Cloud Storage is a very basic concept in the cloud computing. If you already had a knowledge of cloud computing, or if you already learned the other cloud providers, then you don't need to spend any extra time preparing it. So instead of going through all the details of cloud storage, I will focus on the key points in each different certification exam. Now let's quickly go through the concepts of cloud storage. Cloud storage is object storage to store unstructured data. It is not a block storage in which the operation system manages data as chunks of disk. If you are looking for the information about a disk in the block storage or on-prem storage migration such as SAN and NAS replacements in the cloud, you can check my video GCP GCE storage operations in my channel. Here is a simple Google Cloud storage structure looks like. You create a bucket in the cloud storage for your project in your organization. By the way, if you wanted to learn more on the Google Cloud resource hierarchy, you can review the resource hierarchy in the complete security in GCP cheat sheet video. Each project can contain multiple buckets to store the objects. Google uses a single global namespace to simplify locating the buckets and objects. You specify the geographic location such as in one region or in multi-region where the bucket and its contents are stored when you create a bucket. You also choose the storage class or using the default standard. I will compare the different storage classes in the next section. You can use the labels on the bucket with the key value metadata pairs to group your buckets along with the other Google Cloud resources. Objects have two components, object data and object metadata. Object data is typically a file that you want to store in the cloud storage. Object metadata is a collection of name value pairs that describe various object qualities. Objects are immutable, which means that you do not edit them in place, but instead create a new version. I will explain the details in the object learning and object lifecycle management section. Cloud storage uses the long object name to simulate a file system, but it is not file storage, in which you manage the data as a hierarchy of folders. Keep in mind, folders are objects too. In this example, if you needed to access a pix.png file, the file access will be gs slash bucket slash folder to slash pig.png. The web access will be https slash storage.cloud.google.com slash bucket slash folders to slash pig.png. The URL will be the unique key to interact with any web technology. I will explain the access control in the security section. I summarized the storage classes for your reference. You can read the details in the Google Cloud documentation. There are four storage classes, standard, nearline, codeline, and archive. With the geographic location specification, is regional, dual regional, or multi-regional. A storage class is a piece of metadata. 
the default storage class is set to standard storage. The storage class set for an object will affect the object's availability and the pricing model. You can change the default storage class of a bucket. The default class is applied to the objects as they are created in the bucket. The change only affects new objects ended after the change. Original bucket can never be changed to the multi-original. As same, a multi-original bucket can never be changed to the original. Objects can be moved from one bucket to another bucket with the same storage class from the GCB console. However, moving the objects to the buckets of the different storage classes requires using the gsuto command from the cloud shell. We will talk about this one in the cloud storage operations. You will have some simple cloud storage operations questions in the Google Professional Cloud Architect Certification Exam. It uses the gsuto command line to access the cloud storage on bucket and object management tasks. gsuto command is a very similar to the Linux commands with the gsuto command, the option, source URL, destination URL. The command line I listed here as general. The commands will be copy, cp, move, mv, ls, uh, im, isync, du from the Linux commands. If you already have the knowledge on how to use the Linux commands, then you don't need to spend time uh, remembering the commands for the exam. You can review the details of a GSUTO command in the Google Cloud documentation. In cloud storage, objects are immutable, which means that an upload object cannot change throughout its storage lifetime. To support the retrieval of objects that are deleted or overwritten, Cloud Storage offers the object learning feature. When the object learning is enabled for a bucket, Cloud Storage creates a archive version of an object each time the live version of the object is overwritten or deleted. The archive version re retains the name of the object, but it is uniquely identified by a gen generation number. You can list or archive the versions of an object, restore the live version of an object to an older state, or permanently delete an archived version as needed. You can turn version on or off for a bucket at any time. Turning version off lifts the existing object versions in place and causes the bucket to stop accumulating the new archived object versions. You can use the object lifecycle management to automatically delete or archive objects. The object lifecycle management is assigned to a bucket. You can specify actions to be performed on the objects that meet certain rules. When defining a rule, you can specify any set of conditions for any action. There are two actions, delete or set the storage class, and the nine conditions such as age, created before, death since the customer time, is live, etc. You can review the details of actions and conditions in the Google Cloud documentation. Now let's take a look at the consistency on cloud storage operations. You will have a question on this one. 
Cloud storage provides a strong global consistency for read after write, read after metadata update, read after delete, bucket listing, and object listing, including both data and metadata. Eventually, consistency on granting access to or revoking access from resources. Here's the important note. Catched objects that are publicly readable might not exhibit strong consistency. There are four ways to import data into the cloud storage. You can upload the files to the bucket from the console or using the gsutil command from the cloud shell. The storage transport service enables high-performance imports of online data. The data source can be another cloud storage bucket, Amazon S3 bucket, or HTTP HTTPS location. If you have to upload terabytes or petabytes data, you can use the transport appliance. That is a high-capacity storage device that enables you to transfer and securely ship your data to a Google Upload facility, where the Google upload your data to the cloud storage. You can also look for the third-party service to do the offline media import to upload the data from your physical media, such as storage arrays hard disk drives, tabs, and USB flash drives. Now let's take a look on the security. When you create a bucket, you should decide either uniform or find the granted access. Uniform bucket level access allows you to use identity access management, IAM allowing to manage the permissions, Use IAM for the project to control which individual user or the service account can see the bucket, list the objects in the bucket, view the names of the objects in the bucket, or create a new buckets. For most purpose, uh, Cloud IAM is sufficient, and the roles are inherited from the project to bucket and then to the object. For details of how IAM works and IAM best practices, you can review the complete security in GCP cheat sheet video in my channel. The fine granted option enables you to use IAM and access control lists ACLs together to manage your permissions. An SEL is a mechanism you can use to define who has access to your buckets and objects as well as the what level of access they have. Each SEL consists of one or more entries. An entry gives a specific user or group the ability to perform specific actions. Each entry consists of two pieces of information. A permission, which defines what actions can be performed, uh, perform. for example, reader, writer, owner, or default. The second thing is the scope, sometimes referred to as a grantee, which defines who can perform the specific actions, for example, Google account email address, Google group email address, convenience of values for projects, the G Suite domain, cloud identity domain, uh, special identify for all Google account holders, or special identify for all users. In addition to IAM and ACLs, GCP also provides signed URLs, signed uh, policy documents, by based security rules, public access provision, credential access boundaries. Uh, you can read the details in this page. Pay attention to sign the URL because you will have a question on this one.
You create a URL that grants read or write access to a specific cloud storage resource, and specifies when the access expires. That URL is assigned use a private key associated with a service account. When the request is received, Cloud Storage can verify that the access granting the URL was issued on behalf of a trust security principle, in this case the service account, and delegates its trust of that account to the holder of the URL. After you give out the signed URL, it is out of your control. So you want the signed URL to expire after some reasonable amount of time. Cloud Storage supports server-side and client-side encryption. I will not go through the details here because you can review the details of key management and the data encryptions from the complete security in GCP cheat sheet video in my channel. Cloud Storage is tightly integrated with many of the Google Cloud Platform products and services such as GCE, GAE, BigQuery, Dataproc, PubSub, etc. You should also review the Google Cloud Storage and the Database Decision Tree, the GCP GE, GCE Storage Options videos for the uh, Google Professional Cloud Architecture Certification Exam. If you are preparing for Google Professional Cloud Data Engineer Certification Exam, please also review my other Google Cloud Services last minute cheat sheet to cover how the cloud storage works with uh, such as BigQuery, Dataflow, Dataproc, PubSub, etc. Cloud storage in the Google Professional Cloud DevOps Engineer Certification Exam is very straight, just focuses on the storage for CI CD pipeline, saving logs storing the configuration files and also the artifacts etc thanks for watching and as always subscribe to my channel for more great cloud computing learning tips see you next time